Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Dr. Sarah Chidiberi Jo. I am a lecturer, researcher, and media preneur. You're welcome to the first episode of our series, A Basic Guide to Doing Research. This episode is sponsored by Ellen Hub. Please subscribe now to this channel and click the notification bell so that when the other episodes are uploaded, you'll also be the first to know. Please do so now. Thank you so much. Today, I'll be answering four key questions. The first is, what is research? The second question is, why does it matter? Why is research important? And then thirdly, I'll be defining originality one of the key criterion for measuring the effectiveness of research. And then lastly, I'll be talking about the writer process. What does it mean? When do we start writing up? Do we wait till the end or not? I'll be dealing with all this today. Let's jump into it. What is research? Research is a journey or process students and more generally people undertake with the objective of gaining new knowledge or contributing to the already existing pool of knowledge about a subject of interest. Research is about discovering something new. In other instances, it's about adding to what already exists. So no matter what trance you find yourself, be confident that that is what research is. And we do this every day. We want to make our hair, we ask the basic question, what color, what style, we want to wear makeup, um, we want to think about what we do know about the media and what else is there that we do not know. That is the bedrock of research. That is exactly what research is. We want to add to what is out there or we want to introduce a new element. The second thing I'd like to mention about research is that it's done systematically, not haphazardly. There are laid down traditions, there are styles, there are methodologies laid down in different professions and fields that we have to abide by. So we don't do it anyhow. There are things that will look at your work and say, okay, you've qualified, you've done thorough research. Um, and that's why we use the word or we'll use this term to describe research as being systematic. And then finally, all research of any kind have to do with the collection of data. It has to be do with the analysis of said data and then the interpretation. If that is not done or this process is not documented, then it's not quite research. Okay, so these are the basic things you need to know about research. And that answers my first question. What is research? Like I said, it's about discovering something new or adding to what already exists. We have defined what research is. But now it's time to find out why research matters. People carry out research for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's a personal goal, wanting to discover something new or understand an idea or an organization or a person. In other instances, it's done as part of an academic requirement or sometimes for the commercial benefits. But more generally, there are some things laid out that kind of shape the reason why people generally do research. The first I'd like to share here is Research helps us increase knowledge about different subjects, whether it's medicine, it's law, it's the media, it's life itself. By going out there to discover what is, we'll be able to add to what we already know about ourselves and then be able to share that information with others. The other reason people do research is that it facilitates learning. It helps us read better, helps us know better, analyze better, write better, think better. Without doing research, then we'll be led into lies, fed fake news, and so on and so forth. But by going out there, following the process, asking the basic question, relying on good sources, then, of course, learning is facilitated. Another reason people do research is because it enables better understanding and helps us solve problems. For example, look at the pandemic. It took lots of scientists and governments to sit down and say, okay, so what do we do? And then people were buried in labs for weeks and ends and months and ends, just finding out how do we solve this problem? How does the world move forward? Well, there's a vaccine here. That is thanks to research. Research is also key to business success. There's hardly any well-doing firm um, that's not investing so much in their research and development units. It's so important that companies like Apple or even smaller companies invest so much just to edge out the competitor. So it's so important. Research is at the bedrock of life itself. If we don't push ourselves, if we don't question what is, then we'll not know more. 
and life will be stagnant. So it's important. And these are the reasons. Apart from that, I also mentioned earlier, there are commercial benefits. Organizations pay money for people to do research. Yeah, people make money of research. And so that's another reason people do research. And lastly, some people just do research for research sake. They're excited, they love the process, and so they do it. And in the process, they add to knowledge. So th these are the reasons that, some of the reasons, as I say, that people carry out research. The next question is, what is originality? Originality in the context of research refers to the production of an original piece of work, making an original contribution to field of study, or demonstrating originality in thinking through a problem. Originality is at the bedrock of research. It is so important. Academic institutions, for example, will weigh or qualify a work as being good or not if it has an original value. And so what does it really, really mean? How do we know whether our work is original or not? I'd like to mention seven of the 15 definitions of um, originality to just help us understand in more concrete terms what originality means in research. So the first is setting down a major piece of new information in writing for the first time. If that information is new, you're the first to do it. You're the first to tell us, for example, the color of the world or um, the color of the sky or how people think or how people process things. And that information is written down. That work at that point can be measured as being original the first time. Then another way that originality is measured is if we're continuing a previously original piece of work. So someone has already done something, established some facts, provided evidence, and then you want to continue. For example, research is done in a particular country and you want to extend that research. Someone has done something novel and then you want to continue. That work can also be qualified as being original. Sometimes supervisors actually design projects and get students to work on it. Those types of research are also judged as being original. And then fourthly, showing originality in testing somebody else's idea. So someone has said something, and then we go and we process and think about it using new methodologies, um, testing it via new theories, or so on and so forth. That work can also be judged as being original. The idea is, if you're not contributing something new, if you're not doing it in a new way, if you're not thinking through the process in ways that are different from others, your work will not be judged as having an original value. Now, it's always important to emphasize to students that being original doesn't mean you go look for something that's never been done before. Maybe it has been done before, but you're looking at it from another angle, from another perspective, from another country, and so on and so forth. Or you just want to contribute or provide more evidence to support something that already exists. So all of this, and I would like to refer you to Philip Sampo, 2005. They identified 15 ways, 15 definitions of originality, and that will also help you in the course of daily work. But remember, it's not something to fret about. If you've done enough reading, if you've dug into your field or the subject, you find out what is missing, what we refer as the knowledge gap. And once you're able to fill that gap, you're good. Your work is original. And lastly, I'd like to mention that sometimes you're looking at other aspects of your field that others haven't done. For example, in my work, um, my PhD research um, on terrorism and framing, I discovered that lots of people have done research looking at Nigerian newspapers, for example. And so I decided to delve into Twitter and do comparative analysis between um, how Boko Haram was covered in newspapers and then how it was covered um, on Twitter, by tweeters. It was really, really an interesting piece of work. So if other people have focused on a particular area and then you decide to look at some other area, that also qualifies as an original piece of work. Okay, that's originality. So lastly, what is writing up? Writing up is a distinct act form carried out in part during and lastly at the end of your research. You've done all the work you've done the research, you've obeyed the traditions, you've applied the right theories, you've done your analysis and so on and so forth. Now you have to put that entire information in a package form, in a document. Sometimes those documents are presented in, form, in the form um, of reports or dissertations or thesis. It's important that we do this. And it's often what academic institutions will look at to say, okay, you've completed your research work. They want to see that document. But sometimes students make the error of waiting until the end before they start writing up. No. The thing is, as you start your journey, as you start with your literature review, 
it's important that you start penning things down, your sources, your references, any idea that comes to mind, you put it down. And then you start organizing from day one. And then as you go through the entire research process, you keep writing and making adjustments. Because if you wait till the end, you may have lost some juicy elements of your research. And more and more, especially in fields like social sciences or the media, it's important that you include all those inner details, your experiences, your life experience, even as you journey along. And then writing up is, again, not done haphazardly. There are some elements, sections, chapters. Um, sometimes they're presented in even paragraphs that should be included in that document that you present. For example, academic institutions will require students to have a chapter called Introduction, a Literature Review, Methodology, Findings, Discussion and Conclusion and References. And all of these sections we'll be looking into in our future episodes. So please don't lose out. And it's a good time now to also subscribe and share, like, comment on this content. Thank you so much. So that's what writing up is. I hope this has been an enjoyable experience for you. Thank you. See you in the next one.